Well, the Oklahoma Water Resources Center was established in 1965 to address state and regional water resource issues. So this month is Lakes Appreciation Month, and uh, here in Oklahoma, we are blessed with a tremendous number uh, of lakes and reservoirs across the state. Um, so yeah, lakes are tremendously important here in Oklahoma for recreation for energy production, for water supply, for not only our growing urban areas, um, but for agriculture as well. Because our reservoirs and lakes are, are so important uh, to us as a state, we actually placed a, a high priority on harmful algal blooms. It's becoming a tremendous issue, uh, not only in our state, but really across the U.S. and the world. Uh, these harmful algal blooms can obviously have a tremendous impact on, on those different uses and as a result of that we've put a, a major focus on, on the harmful algal blooms. Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Studley. I'm the director of the Environmental Science Graduate Program at Oklahoma State University. Uh, my research involves use of satellite uh, remote sensing, multispectral imagery to do environmental problem solving. I've been working with satellite imagery now for probably, oh, 25 years. Started targeting a local lake, Lake McMurtry, uh, located in Noble County, uh, Oklahoma. It's approximately a 1,300 acre reservoir with 3,500 acres terrestrially surrounding it. And it's been experiencing harmful algal blooms for the first time that we've noticed uh, in history. Uh, to such an extent that there were probably 40 plus algal blooms from October of 2019 through February of 2020. Um, I also happen to be the president of Lake McMurtry Friends and we have staff out here. We have five full-time employees and 13 um, seasonal employees and we've trained them in visual identification of harmful algal blooms so that when they see one on the lake they can text me a message and then I text, I text Dr. Montserrat, and we text the, the folks that run the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Program at OSU, and we deploy um, resources out to the lake to collect in-situ water quality samples. We deploy drones with multispectral sensors to map the spatial distribution of the harmful algal blooms. And then Dr. Montserrat downloads imagery that's collected by varying sensors that fly repetitively uh, around our planet. And since uh, the Landsat days, these sensors have become a higher spatial and spectral resolution, which means we can get more information out of the data. So we moved on to Sentinel data, which is a 10 meter multispectral pixel, and uh, CubeSat, which is um, an array of sensors put up by University of California, Berkeley, I believe. And um, they collect repetitive daily uh, imagery uh, at a three meter pixel. Uh, which is really phenomenal um, spatial resolution. Spectral resolution is okay too. Um, and so the whole purpose behind this is to collect enough data using in situ data and satellite imagery to start creating predictive models that will allow us to understand when and where harmful algal blooms are likely to occur. My name is Dr. Abu Mansare. Uh, I am working with the Water Center as a research specialist. And this is one of um, my research stations. The idea is that harmful algal blooms, they grow and multiply in a matter of hours. Um, and the occurrence is very erratic. You, you don't know when it happens and how it happens. So ordinary ground-based monitoring is not enough to be able to capture the frequency and spatial extent of the occurrence of the harmful algal blooms. So you need additional uh, pieces of monitoring strategies. So what we are trying to do is uh, combine satellite imagery, uh, drone imagery, and ground-based monitoring to be able to develop early warning systems so that lake managers can use that tool to monitor the situation on their lakes on a daily basis. So what we're doing is we come to the lake every day and then grab water samples, uh, in-situ water samples. And then from time to time, we also bring um, the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering folks to
to fly drones for us and get the drone imagery. So we combine those three sets of data to develop these predictive tools that can be used as um, early detection systems. So for Lake McMurtry, the key objective of our study is to be able to address an issue that remote sensing from satellites have been having for small reservoirs like Lake McMurtry and also for the edges of reservoirs it is difficult to use satellites to be able to get very sharp images especially for water quality so what we're trying to combine the drone the ground-based monitoring and the satellite the planet scope satellite to be able to do that to be able to refine the imagery where the water transitions into land because when you have the land and the water that could be mixed in that pixel and it is very difficult to be able to get a good image. We are trying to refine that and maybe use it to address issues of small reservoirs and the edges of those reservoirs. Now for large lakes like the Great Lakes, you can use pretty much any satellite there because it's open water, it's very large, but for smaller lakes like this, you need to go that step further. And so that is exactly what we're trying to do. And we have uh, a graduate student, Priya Kayasta, who is working on that to be able to develop um, these um, predictive models, which we will eventually take and put into a tool uh, using artificial intelligence. And then lake managers will use that tool that will give them warnings about whether they need to go out on the water to confirm whether indeed there's a bloom or not.